Kevin, what are you doing, man? Kevin! Is it not obvious, man? I'm setting the tone for this conversation on badge life. We're going to talk to the Ironwood Cyber Guys, and we're going to talk to them about how they're going to outdo themselves this year again and do something even cooler than this Tron badge. Oh my gosh, Kevin, you hurt my head sometimes, man. But let me tell you something. Nothing of what you're doing is going to help add value to this episode because this value this episode is amazing we've got the ironwood guys coming on here to talk about badge life and their contributions to badge life and not only that we're going to be looking a little deeper behind the covers and some of their handiwork on this year's badge so you guys will want to see this and kevin quit doing that you're driving me crazy let's get into this episode Let's go. Episode 8 Fighting Acronym Fatigue Part 2 With bonus Badger Life content featuring Ironwood Security. All right, we're back, and as Jason teased before we left for that quick break, we are going to talk a little bit about DEF CON. And with DEF CON... The comes, blingy! <laughs> the blingy, the, the, the badge life. We, we actually had an episode a while back. I think it was uh, season, season one, episode eight, if I'm not mistaken. And we had our friends on from Andnot XOR, and we talked about... Uh, Badge life and the whole episode was on badge life. So we're about to dig into badge life with Aaron here and the Ironwood team and and the really cool badge that they created last year for DEF CON 30, which, as you know, now we've kind of teased that earlier. It's the Tron badge. But I want to talk about how that came about. But before we do, for those that are new to this and that, that maybe you've never even visited or gone to DEF CON. So there's this subculture within DEF CON all around the electronic badges. You've got, uh, you've got software engineers, hardware engineers. You've got people that make these kinds of cool, hackable electronic devices that you can usually either obtain through challenges or most of the time, a lot of these makers are just giving these things away for free, but, um, it's become a thing where people are obsessed by it. You know, you, if you go from the end of the strip in Vegas where Black Hat is down to the other end of the strip where DEF CON is, you can see immediately. As soon as the sun starts to go down, you see all the blinkies. And you know what it is. It's the badges, and, and that's what uh, DEF CON is all about. A lot of people collect them. So I'm going to read you a definition of what badge life is and what it's become. So... Badge Life, it's a celebration of independent hardware creators working for months at a time to bring custom electronic badges to conferences around the world. At DEF CON, Badge Life is huge. It has gotten progressively huge, more huge every year. And I'd say it really probably blew up around 2016 uh, to the point where it, it's kind of ridiculous now. <laughs> Everybody's trying to make a badge now, but I think that makes it even better. So people come from all around to try to collect these badges. Usually these are limited edition badges because they're not cheap to make, obviously, and they're limited run electronics. So the cool thing about it is they're unique. And if you can get your hands on one, that's an awesome thing because they're really cool and, and they're very unique. And usually these things have unique features that make them hackable. So... With that said, I would like to hand it over to you, Aaron, because the real question here is everybody loved. We saw how many people were losing their minds over this badge last year. So it was give us a categorically, bit of oh, it was man, it was categorically the badge to have last it, year. It, it, it was out in, of and the only reason why we know this 
is because we were one of the first ones to get it from you guys at Black Hat, and we yeah. wore it throughout Black Hat prior to DEF CON, oh, yeah. and everybody was coming to us asking us, hey, where'd you yeah. get that from? Where'd you yeah. get that from? Yeah. I want one of those, blah, 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 blah. I mean, it was I, constant I, I, barrage to, 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 of... <laughs> to, to that point, I, I, there was a couple times I thought when we were walking through, you know, over by the league yeah. in the darker areas, I thought, man, I'm about to get shanked for this damn badge. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not kidding. I think we had five different people that told us that who do they need to kill to get a badge? We had five assassins basically that were ready to kill him oh my god no joke no these joke guys were like, oh man dead on. what do i who do i have to kill to get one of those yeah it was crazy yeah <laughs> oh my yeah, god right that's too funny well well how did you guys come up with the idea and talk a little bit about a little bit about you know why tron yeah so i mean my first badge i think it was back in defcon 14 maybe so that's this is 15 16 years ago uh it's been it a minute the, it's been it's a been, minute it was the pirate jack who is the the defcon logo the the uh smiley face with the crossbone okay yeah um and his eyes blinked it was just two leds in the eyes and yeah that's, that's pretty much yeah, i've got that badge i've got that i one. got yeah. that one yeah. yeah that was my that was my hacker badge. warehouse was selling that yeah. It's a cool badge. And then right after that, they did one with LEDs that were in a uh, matrix, and you could make words uh, scroll down it, and you could do persistence of vision and stuff like that. So I was in love with badges, you know, back then when I, I first went to DEF CON. That's when I decided, at that point, I was still a software engineer, but that's when I decided I wanted to be in cybersecurity. I was like, this is the coolest thing. I want to be a hacker. I want to I want to mm -hmm. join this community. And badge life was a huge part of that, being able to hack the badges. And I'm a terrible hardware guy, I'll tell you. I, I'm I'm terrible with hacking hardware, but it get me in the software piece. And as soon as we get in on the software piece, then I go to town. So I love having, I love making friends with with hardware people. And um, the cool thing about Ironwood Cyber is we've got a really good mix of software and hardware folks. Um, so when we decided. When we started the company, we were like, we're all in on this culture. We love the culture. We love the people. We love, you know, the things about DEF CON, the, the badge life and, and the parties and all of that stuff. It's just a part of who we are. It's, it's what, who made it, it's what made us who we are today. So we were, we were all yeah. in on let's, let's do something. Let's create a badge. Let's give back to the community that created us and that, that gave so much to us. And we just want to be a part of it. So. We started thinking about, okay, what could we do, uh, ideas, and I, I'm a nerd at heart. You know, my origin story, when I was five years <laughs> old, my brother taught me to program in basic, and I was a nerd from, from then on. I remember taking out books and just typing code when I was like a little kid, um, and the, I remember being somewhere around 18, 17 years old when the movie Hackers came out. And I went and bought a yeah. yellow page. I went and bought a <laughs> neon yellow pager that, so that I could wear it and that some people could text me, hack the planet <laughs> on it. Uh, and I, I, wore, um, <laughs> I wore rollerblades. I mean, you, you name it, man. I was just, I was, I was, a yeah. at heart. I, I was a hacker at heart. And so all of that kind of led to, and I loved, um, I loved sci-fi films, right? Tron and star Wars and all, all the things. Yeah. And, um, so when we started Ironwood Cyber, obviously our logo, which is here on my um, uh, on my hoodie, uh, kind of has the the W is actually from the Tron font. So if you look at the N in Tron, it's actually the W, but it's flipped. Uh, and so um, oh, yeah. we kind of had we kind of had this whole Tron theme. I love the glowy like grid. You know, when they go into the grid, everything glows. People's clothes glow, and, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So yeah, we just yeah. love that. We love that aesthetic and that look. And so whenever they said, let's do a badge, they were, we were kind of toying with ideas. And I just said, Hey, I've always wanted to have a Tron disc. Like I'm, I, I that's just been, I've always wanted to throw one at somebody and, you know, de-res them or whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was the, as soon as I said it, the entire team was like, yes, let's do that. No, no, there was no argument. There was no back and forth. That was the badge we were going to create for the first year. Second year was not quite as, as, as clean. We actually had a lot of different ideas. Uh, some star Wars type stuff. We had, we've, we've kind of gone, we've gone different directions with it. Um, and I'll give some hints, uh, you know, as to what it is this year. We've already put a few hints out there. Um, I think some people have seen, uh, 
the hint that I've been giving is is more on the the uh, Black Sabbath. Uh, so I, I've, I've told people you need to get out your Black Sabbath albums. Um, and uh, yeah, if you know Black Sabbath's music, you might be able to guess what. And you know, you know, nerdy, uh, nerdy you're going films and uh, so it's going old school. Going old school on us, isn't it? Going old school. Yeah, yeah. I like it. So I like um, it. So yeah, we came up with an idea. We've enhanced. So we took. We wanted to take kind of the similar design for this year, um, so that when people saw us the second year of doing this, that they would say, "Oh, is that those same guys that created that Tron badge last year?" Because it's going to harken back to that. Yeah, You're going to. Yeah. yeah. Actually, the the cool thing about that too is we didn't have to redesign every. We of course redesigned the. Um, the look of it and the, the 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 layout and everything, but really, as far as the electronics, it's really the same set of electronics pretty much. Um, and so we were able to reuse a lot of the code, a yeah. lot of the design and stuff like that. So that was that you kind of build on it, and uh, so we were excited excited to do that. But this year is going to be, I'll tell you. Um, so this badge, we did some three D printing here. So if you the the ring pieces, uh, the the dif- light diffusers, if you will. Those are 3D printed. You can tell when you kind of look at them, they have that 3D printed look to them. We thought about that for this year. We actually looked at different types of 3D printers. So if you've seen some of the ones that use liquid and they use UV and, you know, resin and stuff like that. Wow. We, wow. we toyed, we toyed with that idea. Um, so we, we ended up not going that direction though. Um, those, the, that type of 3D printing didn't scale very well. Um, so we've we've picked up yeah, some new yeah. te- we picked up some new techniques to make some of the uh, the plastic elements the 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 manufactured elements. So the DefCon badges are typically just a circuit board, right? There's not usually a whole lot of extra. This year might be different because if you've seen the if you've seen the teaser for this year's badge for DefCon, it actually has a pluggable piece and and like some some customizable things that you might. Yeah, have I haven't seen like that. that. I haven't seen yeah. that yet. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's this, interesting too because. Because I think when you guys did this model, here's the thing that stood out for me is you blended multiple cultures in this model. You blended the model because because I've done three D printing in different areas, culture areas. I've done hardware, electronic builds in different cultural areas, right? But I have yet to have seen a badge that kind of blended them both together. And that's what you guys did when you did this. You said, look, how can we like reduce the costs, make it very effective and efficient and, and make it very aesthetically pleasing to solve, you know, a message that we're trying to give out. That's what you did with this. That's why I applaud you on this one. This one, this one from, from that technologist standpoint of seeing these different areas be blended together. You guys are yeah. spot on on yeah, that. The, and I think that's what piece, a lot of people have saw. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, uh, the other piece that I No, so I think that's about. what a lot of people saw, and that's what brought it all together. And that's why people thought, this is the badge I want to have. Yeah. Yeah, the other piece that we brought together on this, um, so we've got, of course, outstanding software developers on our team. One of them is a game designer. He designs VR games. He designs mobile games and things like that. And so if you saw, we wanted, we wanted there to be a mobile element to be able to program the badge for, for those who maybe don't, you know, have a hardware background or even some of the, you know, contacts and stuff are inside. So it was really hard to try to, you know, try to uh, get to the hardware. You can get to it pretty, you know, if you, if you want to, but um, we wanted a way for you to be able to customize it using, uh, you know, a, a mobile app. Well, last year we actually didn't achieve that. We didn't get all the way to the mobile app piece. If you remember, we actually did a, we did mm-hmm. a, an, a web application that used uh, Bluetooth yeah. to program the badge, but you had to, if you were on iPhone, you had to, to download the BlueFi browser because it was the, it's one of the only browsers that can do uh, Bluetooth over, over HTTP like that. Um, and yeah. so this year's mobile app, um, you guys, it's I'm <laughs> blown away. I saw some stuff yesterday. I saw some demos of it yesterday. Can't and, wait, dude. Um, I can't wait. It's it's in the same vein, but it's actually a mobile app this year. We've are, we're already in the Apple Store. We haven't published, but we're in the Apple Store, so we know we're approved. Uh, so there's going to be uh, a kick-ass um, 
mobile application that's going to allow you to do some really cool stuff. The other thing that we enhanced on this year's badge is the, so some of the giveaways that we did were CTF related, like you had to solve some puzzles, some, some hacking puzzles and things like that. Yeah. And yeah. Um, this year we've taken that to a whole new level. So the badge keeps track oh. of your, the badge keeps track of your progression uh, towards solving the, the, the CTF. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's going to be, it's going to be pretty cool. And it's interactive in that um, if you find one of us, one of the badge creators, you can actually get special abilities. You can solve certain parts of the puzzles that you, that would be much harder if you don't encounter one of us. So it really encourages people to come to us and talk to us about it. Um, and again, not necessarily so we can market for the company. Yeah, we're, you know, it, it, there's a marketing element to it, but that's not the main piece for us. It really is just encouraging kind of that collaboration and uh, and that culture um, around the badge. So uh, we're also building more of the badges this year. So there's, a, I think, more than double of what we created last year. So, um, oh, wow. But, wow. Uh, yeah. I'm excited for you guys. This is, this is just getting yeah. me really pumped up, but it's getting me pumped up for you guys, right? Yeah. To see how it all transfolds into, you yeah. know, the, the mounds of people that are going to be <laughs> sitting there trying to talk to you all just to get their stuff updated, right? To the next yeah. level. I mean, it's those types of things around community that yeah. DEF CON is all about. It's about community, sharing, talking, you know, experiencing and making connections. And that's what you guys are building in the, in, in these badges. And that's what badge life is about, man. I mean, yep. kudos. Well, and you I guys think about it, it is that, that what, what you guys came into it last year, you know, in, in a unique position because we're coming out of the pandemic and we're kind of slowly rolling back into this public forum of getting around everybody else. And, and if I'm not mistaken, what was DEF CON last year? Was it mask mandatory? I can't remember. I think yeah. it was. Yeah, they were pretty strict. Yeah, they were pretty strict. Every time we walked in, oh, we tried to do it. A, yeah. we black to black do hat was optional. Away. DEF CON mandatory. Yeah. 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 We tried to yeah, do Yeah. But I mean, we're away. coming off of that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's just interesting. Y'all, you guys came into a, such a unique situation, but even cooler than that is that you guys were the new kids on the block. And not only did you come in here, guns a blazing. I mean, the people that are new to badge life, I don't know a single person that, that is into these electronic badges that didn't talk yeah. about, Hey, who did that Tron badge? Have you seen that Tron badge? Hey, what's up with that Tron badge? You know, how do I get one of those? And, and that's the fun of it. I mean, because you're building up all this 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 hoopla about this badge, and that's giving you guys visibility to who. But you I got I take that back, Kevin. I take that back. I think that is look. There is a lot of really smart, innovative individuals that show up at DEF CON. That's what makes it so powerful, right? And I think that takes it back to the fact that. They saw this badge as a collaboration of different communities of innovation that they haven't seen before. Because to Aaron's point, in the past, these have been, you know, circuit boards that we've sent to yeah, get yeah. published, fabricated somewhere, and we have a lot of electronic, you know, artifacts that happen. They took a different take on this and they added additional aesthetic elements that not only reduce the cost but change the aesthetic environment of what they were offering when they, when they sent it out to people. And, well, and, and that made it so appealing. Most people that think about 3D printing, they don't think about the 3D printing in a using a material that's translucent in any way. Yeah. You think about, you know, little 3D printed uh, things that you can print on a printer, but nothing like this. Where you can actually yeah, see the LEDs just through the, problem the translucent solving, the problem material. solving techniques that it took to do that too. You you'll you'd be surprised at how many different materials we thought about here. We literally had at one point we had glue <laughs> sticks out and we were trying to make this ring out of glue sticks. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like silicone. Wow. Uh, like we're trying all different things. And it's about puzzle solving. It's about figuring out what's gonna work. And then even manufacture like putting these badges together because there's two boards there's a 
the circuit board and then there's the power board on the back, which is really just the battery circuits. Um, putting yeah. those two things together and putting the 3D printed pieces in here, it, our hands were bleeding. Like it was just, it, we didn't think yeah. about the manufacturing. Like, how are we going to put all 150 of these together? And we were yeah. at Black yeah. Hat the first yeah. night, just like fingers bleeding, trying to put these things all together, at, at the, um, you know, at the last minute. <laughs> so wow. this year we thought a lot more about manufacturing and, okay, if we're going to build this, what's the easy, how can we make these pieces like click and play? Like you just click them into place. Um, and we, we've done a much better job this year. We've figured out a lot more about manufacturing. Like I said, we're using resin, but we're not using a 3D printed resin. So we're actually using resin oh. casting uh, this year. So we're casting Ooh. our own um, resin molds. So we built a, we 3D printed a mold. And then the fastest, easiest way to get the best look that we wanted for this year was to do resin pouring. Uh, and that took so much back and forth. I mean, uh, just trying different things, building different kinds of molds, putting different kinds of uh, like straws and different, uh, eva you know, because you've got bubbles to deal with and you've got, you know, all, all kinds yeah, of different uh, elements <laughs> to deal with. Dude, oh, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That's so, crazy. That's so, so you didn't fascinating. Even... So, so even listen to this, right? In this segment, we're talking about 100% straight up innovation and how innovative thinking works. That's what this segment is all about. But, but, it's, but we're talking about, about badges, but it's like, yeah. look, how did you go through a process of thinking about generating some state-of-the-art, cutting-edge badge that no one has created before, right? And do it in the way that solves a lot of the problems that you've experienced from the past years in manufacturing badges like this. Crazy that, that's good it. episode that's, on that, man. That's that's the key because everybody that's involved in badge life, all of these makers that have been doing this for more than more than one year, right? And, and and there's teams of these badge makers that do it every year and they try to out innovate their ideas from the previous year. That's what makes it cool because yeah. that gives them a challenge. Um, you know, you'll remember the uh, and not XOR badge that where they had the yep. light pipes they're trying to illuminate the light pipes that came from a concept that they would have never even thought to try to do that but it was a stupid concept that some idiot came from out of yeah. the crowd and said let, oh, let, let me say this again very stupid <laughs> idiot that yeah. i know but i'm like question sometimes came up with and i was well, like oh my gosh are they really going to do this well what yeah. well, well, kevin pentecost that We'll whip a picture of that piece together, piecemeal concept badge on the screen for you so you can see it. But it was made out of foam board and aquarium tubing. And they said, <laughs> yeah, we can do that. And we're like, yeah. all right, cool. I can't wait to see this. And sure enough, they pulled it off. So yeah. that's what's fun well, about it, man. You can always but that's the essence to of better. innovation, right? I'll give you one more. I'll give you one more little uh, sneak peek nugget. So, did you know? Did you know that there is a three D printing filament that is conductive, so that you can create parts that are touch what? sensitive. You can three D print parts that are touch sensitive. Uh, and oh yeah, my so god! We, we nice. That, yeah, we found nice. that out, and uh, that may be a part of this year's badge. Is capacitive. Uh, um, that is cool. 3D printed, 3D printed filament. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. But and without further ado, I will. I'll give some more a little sneak previews. Um, this first part is just for fun. It, oh, it here we go. The, it will be part of the badge, but you'll see um, a bunch of uh, of random random gifs and images that you can kind of try to try to glean nice. some information from. Uh, but these will oh. all be. These will all be part of the badge in some way, shape, or form. And then once we get down here, I will see if I can play you a little video. It's going to be hard to see. Oh, man. We can't. There we go. I don't know if you can see that. That's part of the manufacturing. Of, of the <laughs> yeah, barely. Barely. But it's, show, yeah, it's hard to make out what it was. It's a, it's a drill press and uh, it oh wow be, okay yeah it may or may not be smoothing out some okay. parts that we needed to smooth out 
Um, may or so, may not be. So here's the thing. I think that, you know, if you are uh, n a, n a continuous DEF CON participant over the years, you will want to see this episode and you will want to see this particular segment on how badges are made. And, and, and why it's so important is because this highlights the innovative thinking that individuals in cybersecurity actually produce, right? Much, much beyond, let's, let's, let's put it in a, in a box, right? Much beyond what Ironwood innovation is doing, because this whole episode is already encapsulated the innovation thinking behind Ironwood, right? So you have to take away that at least. But just on a broader scale, how innovative the whole badge life world really is. And it, it, yeah. it takes individuals like what you're seeing here to really think out of the box on how do you produce something that is so different than what they've been, that, that what people have received in the past that is still so like awe inspiring. And that's really what, what all technology is about, man. Everything we talk about, that's what it's about. When you talk about AI or hardware development or software development or, you know, data analytics or whatever, or even just the basics of protecting your safe self with cybersecurity, it is all about innovation of thought. So yeah. this is a great episode. This is really, this is really fun. I really appreciated that because it highlights all of those aspects. Yeah, well, there's, I, I there's totally one more agree. thing that I would like. I, I think we need to add, we have to ask this, Aaron, because I know there's going to be people that will listen to this and they're going to want to know. How do we get our hands on one of those badges? What do they need to do and what do they need to be looking for? Obviously, if they're smart, they're going to join your Twitter page. They're going to follow you guys because you're going to be dropping hints right there. I yep. see that Twitter page already is going to, it's going to blow up by hundreds some, of followers in, in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I think we well, What else can they do? We're a startup, right? And so when we went to Black Hat, we weren't even a year old yet, our company. And we started off at like 40 followers. And I think by the end of Black Hat, we had 1,200 followers or something like that. I mean, so going from 40 <laughs> to 1,200, that's, that's a pretty huge. Yeah. Uh, and, and this year, that's awesome. I, I see it. I see it blowing up again. Yeah. Number one, follow our Twitter. Uh, follow our Twitter feed. That's yeah. going to be the main feed. We'll post some stuff on LinkedIn. We'll co-post. But everything is really driven off of, off of Twitter. Um, if you're at Black Hat, come to our booth because there will be this year we're going to be doing straight up raffles, just, you know, raffle ticket type, type of stuff. Um, so we're going to be doing nice. straight up raffles at, at Black Hat. Uh, and then there will be we're calling that a pre hype um, or what's it called? A badge hype contest. That'll be about a week before DEF CON. Start looking again. Follow our Twitter. Start looking for 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 badge stuff on Twitter. There'll be a. Uh, uh, like I said, a badge hype competition that you will have to solve, uh, you know, puzzles that you'll have to solve CTF style stuff. Uh, and the first so many, I forgot how many, but the first so many will win a badge um, that they can come pick up uh, at Black Hat or DEF CON. Um, and then during DEF CON, there will be another big one night. We did a, a CTF um, capture the flag with several puzzles that you had to solve and the puzzles pointed you to where you needed to show up and the first 30 people to show oh. up to that location. We may do one, we may do one flash mob drop. That was, we loved it. It oh, was awesome cool. to see people run. So we stood at the top of the top of the escalator at DEF CON that goes down into the conference area. And I think we had people running up the escalator the wrong direction. Uh, we had <laughs> within, within 17 seconds of posting that to Twitter, we had people coming. And within wow. ninety set within ninety seconds, we had no more badges. We gave away like thirty five or something at that drop. So That's we might insane. do one of those. That's insane. We might do one of those, but we had. I felt bad for some of the people who ran really hard trying to get there, and they didn't. They didn't get one. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah. So yeah, different ways. Different ways to get a badge. We do have more this year, so there's a you know better chance. the uh, The mobile app is going to be excellent. It's going to be so cool. So. 
We're yeah, excited. I can't wait We're to see excited. that. It's going to be awesome. Excited to see it. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. All right. Well, Aaron, I mean, I, again, can't thank you enough. I know we went long tonight, but this is a topic that everybody that's going to be in, in attendance at DEF CON is going to want to hear about, and they're excited about it. So, uh, you know, a lot of the people that, that, that weren't fortunate enough to get last year's badge are already asking, how do I get, how do I, how do we, how are you going to do it this year where I can get on, get one? So yeah. this will be helpful for those folks. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited so to see thank where you this for goes. This. We saw them on eBay. I'm not not kidding. One of them sold for fourteen hundred dollars. That was crazy. Somebody sold. Oh my god! For $1, yeah, $1, I am. Yeah, not I'm surprised. not surprised though. Yeah, yeah. they were I'm not at all yeah. surprised. I mean, mo generally, each one of these badges sells for a couple of hundred bucks anyway. Yeah. So I'm mm -hmm. not surprised. I think I think the interesting thing is is in all of this, and I think why I appreciate it so much. I appreciate this culture so much. It's because, I, you know, at, at heart, I'm all about technology and I'm about technology advancing to the betterment of everybody and everyone be feeling like they're being able to contribute to it. When you see innovation being done and, and things simple, like, I mean, if you understand what is required to build a badge, I mean, I I went through the whole nine yards with that, so I know what's required to build a badge. <laughs> There's a whole lot of work, right? Yep. And if you don't know your stuff, you better be figuring it out, or you'll be burning out a couple of circuits like I did back in college. <laughs> but so 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 th that's an important piece to this equation. Hardware development converge with software development, converge with out of box thinking technology solutions. That's the epitome of what we're talking about in our day and age in technology. And so seeing that come together, man, that's what excites me. I think that excites a lot of people that show up at these DEF CON events. And I mean, they all want a part of it, right? So, so those are the things that, that, you know, inspire me to want to be more involved in DEF CON and Black, not Black Hat too. But so much more DEF CON because <laughs> of the people that are there and the people that contribute to the success of technology, generally technology and cybersecurity as a whole. Yep. I, I, I told you, you when we started been. this episode, we, we could talk like this is the kind of episode that excites us and we could talk all freaking night. But eventually... Yeah. We got to decide when are we going to cut this thing off, right? Yeah. So, so, yeah. so, Aaron, is there are there any parting shots you want to leave for anybody, or anything else that you haven't said? No, this has been this has been great. Um, yeah, I just appreciate you guys having having us on, and um, we, let's do this again, and let's let's partner and collaborate. Love to do some some stuff with you guys, and we'll definitely we'll see you at the conference, and uh, we'll hang out again. And um, yeah, it's it's all about kind of that that common thinking and that com that camaraderie that, that comes with it. So I definitely appreciate you guys bringing us on and inviting me on here. Yeah. Absolutely. We're so glad that you came on and this is a great conversation for both of us, Kevin and I, I think, you know, we've talked about doing this for quite a while and bring you on um, and to bring this information to our audience, deciphering the difference between all of these acronyms and helping them get a good understanding of what the difference of each one really is and what differentiates each one from its its counterpart is so important. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll, that by itself was gold, but then we added the whole part to where we're talking about the RX solution that you guys have and how you've built AI into that. They added even more gold on top of this. We couldn't have stopped at that level because Badge life had to come into play <laughs> yeah. with you guys yeah. really, really, really sitting the stage last year and wanting to know what you're going to do this year. So I really got to tell you, I'm, I'm really thankful for, for you, Aaron, um, and, and your, your group, your entire company, and the work that you guys are doing to solve this problem in cybersecurity and make a difference, really. Make a difference that, that people have choice, right? And this is one of the choices they can make. In, in securing their environment. And uh, it's a very good choice. So thank you for doing that work. And, you know, Kevin and I just thank you for being a part of this and where we can take this next and how much more we can educate people. So thank you for all of that. 
Yeah. Thank Kevin, you, you want to close this out? Yep. Um, absolutely. I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head, Jason. I mean, it, 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 we covered a lot tonight, but it was so good. And um, for those that are listening that, that don't know about Ironwood, go check them out. Google them. Look them up. Um, go to their website. Look at their solutions. Uh, th- these are guys that are thinking outside the box and providing solutions that uh, are different and unique, but very, very effective. So give them a look. And of course, this goes without saying, follow them on Twitter, because if you want to get one of these awesome badges this year, you better be following them on Twitter, because that's where you get (laughs) all the info, right? So everybody, take care. And until the next episode, cheers. See you guys. See ya. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to this episode of the Cyber Distortion Podcast. We're pleased that we now offer and have many options for consuming the content of our episodes. We offer the audio-only versions on all major streaming audio platforms. We offer video and audio formats so you can take in all of the rich content visually if you'd like to. That's over on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash at the Cyber Distortion Podcast. Don't forget to help us grow the podcast by subscribing while you're out there. Feel free to drop comments on what topics you'd like to see us cover for future episodes. You can also visit our brand new blog site. That's out at cyberdistortionpodcast.com. Follow us on Twitter at Distortion Cyber as our handle. We release discount codes, blurbs about upcoming episodes blog links, and of course, talk about drop locations for swag while we're out at various cybersecurity conferences like Black Hat and DEF CON. Speaking of swag, we have officially opened up the long-awaited Cyber Distortion Swag Shop, which is accessible either on our blog site at cyberdistortion.com or online directly at cyberdistortionswag.shop. We have tons of really cool new swag to offer to help get the name out about the podcast, and we're releasing new items all the time. We're offering lots of discount codes right now at the end of most of our episodes, so listen for those and watch the Twitter page because we drop those there as well. I believe that's it for now, so until next time, cheers everybody, take care, stay diligent, and remember, you are the last line of defense.